Uh, we're back in person. Um, it's been, uh, let's see, it's been uh, 15 months uh, since we saw folks in person, I believe. So I'm just going to recap what I've been up to for the last 15 months. It'll take me about a half hour, and then we'll move on to the agenda. Now let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Hey, Dominus, I don't get a flag. Do I get a flag? There's one right there. Yeah. So why are we, why are we waiting for the flag? Um, Council, are there any changes to the agenda that uh, you'd like to see additions or deletions? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to table 10B um, indefinitely for right now. Okay. Council fine with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, we will remove 10B uh, indefinitely. We'll revisit that in the future. Anyone else? Comments? I'll make a comment. Glad to see everybody. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, um, when we do public comment, if there are any, uh, we will be utilizing this microphone and that chair. Here comes our honor guard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dom. So we'll do our Pledge of Allegiance now, folks. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And liberty and justice for all. <laughs> That's for you, Jim. <laughs> Did you take one of the photos home? Yeah, I was looking at that. No, I did not. No. What's up? Dom, we lose a photo. Uh, that's under investigation. <laughs> <laughs> the criminal matter, I can't speak to that. So as Mr. Uh, as Mr. Hawkins had shared earlier, uh, it is great to see everyone. Uh, hopefully we're going to make uh, continued uh, improvements and get back to some level of normalcy throughout the summer. So... Um, uh, it's been a long road, but uh, we're slowly getting back. So we'll start with um, public comment. If there's anyone who would like to have a public comment, Zach, that's not on the agenda, but come on up, sit down if you would. How are you tonight, Zach? Hey, okay. Good, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. It, it is different. Uh, I can't remember the last and it is good to see people's faces. Um, my friends and I have been getting vaccinated and hanging out, as I, as I imagine a lot of you are. And it has been really good to see people in person, face to face, um, because it has something to just being people that is really irreplaceable. Um, and my public comment uh, is, is just simply that, um, well, I'm really happy to be back to this. Um, from a, you know, government transparency and accessibility um, lens, I really just want to, I feel kind of sad about the loss of accessibility from the public to, to these meetings. I'll, I'll say that over the past year, um, the ability to interact with you guys being at home, um, and it, it was something that was really important to me. Um, so with a single camera, I've never been present in the same space. Um, I really, really, really be grateful to see some efforts made to bridge the divide with folks at home as we ease into getting out and back in public more regularly. Um, any efforts, again, with reduced, um, you know, cameras, but not all on laptops anymore, you're all here, um, would be much appreciated uh, to uh, just give the tools that people need who can't be present, have accessibility issues generally, uh, give them a way to interact with you guys and let their voices be heard and, and their public comments be heard. So any efforts you can take on, on that, um, I personally would appreciate it. Uh, I think it's doable, and um, I just want to thank you for all your time. And I can't stress enough how great it is being under the sun, just how we see you. 
and back to the beer at 14 Star and enjoying the, each other's company. So I treasure that part. Um, but I kind of am mourning the loss of, of accessibility and transparency at a local government level. So thanks again. Zach, are you old enough to drink? Correct. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I said time later if you want to go. <laughs> Please let the answer be yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Anyone else? Public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to um, item number four, where we will uh, entertain a motion to recess for liquor control. So, second. We have a motion, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Seeing none, we're in the, uh, we have recessed the council meeting and we are now in the liquor control portion of our agenda. Curry, how are you? Good, great to see everybody. My pleasure. You too, Curry. Excellent, so, uh, yes, we have a couple items for liquor control. I'm here to answer any questions. Um, tonight we do have Steve Dunning with us from Fort Pitstar um, for council review on approval of their license and that should be in your council packet. Steve, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mr. So this was, a, this was just a training violation. Yes. Uh, did get the, what's up with that, Steve? I, I can speak to that if you'd like to. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me, uh, council people. Um, so uh, the issue in question, I believe, happened 18 months to two years ago. Um, we found out from the Department of Liquor Control that we could uh, conduct in-house training as opposed to having all of our individuals go online individually and do the computer training uh, for service. And so our bar manager at the time, Jill, was doing that in-house training. Everything was going great. Uh, we have had uh, no Underage uh, serving uh, violations or, or it's uh, over serving violations. Uh, and what had happened was uh, we were unaware that the individual doing the in house training needed to attend the in person training of the DLC and not just the online recertification. Um, so it was well, uh, not knowing what we didn't know um, that was rectified on the spot. We had a one day suspension uh, with uh, Mr. Senator. And uh, then we continue to have what I would consider a fairly sterling record in the world of, uh, of the online business. So I would, uh, I would appreciate your favorable uh, discussion on, on renewing our license. And I look forward to being a productive member of the, uh, the St. Albans corporate community. Curry, all the documents in? Oh, yes, yeah, they're good to go with all that, yep. Just reinforce, Steve, uh, you served the penalty back on November 4th, 2019. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Does anyone have any questions for Steve? Steve, I, I knew that you had had a policy at 14 Star for a long time, kind of intentionally keeping the hours uh, low um, and having a certain philosophy about that. I don't know if you wanted to mention that at all. Well, we, we've always uh, curtailed our evening hours. Um, so it is, it is uh, as you're all aware, I'm sure, um, being an alcohol business is certainly a slippery slope. Um, it can have a uh, positive effect on the community in terms of being a contributing uh, corporate member of the community and demonstrating what. Okay. So this on me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and demonstrating to other businesses what right looks like and what community leadership looks like. Uh, on the other end, um, there's a lot of potential hazards that come with, uh, with serving alcohol. And so we've intentionally curtailed our evening hours. Um, generally staying open no longer than 10 p.m. Uh, because I'm of, the, I'm of the belief that while there is certainly money to be made in serving alcohol after 10 p.m., I think there is a uh, significant amount of diminishing returns in terms of community good in serving alcohol past a certain time and responsible time. 
we're not in the business of um, uh, intoxicating the community to the point where it's a public nuisance. Um, instead of being a place where we can uh, meet and gather and, and um, build camaraderie and, and do community events uh, without having the negative aspects. And I think it will, if you were to have a representative from the St. Albans PD in here, they would, they would speak to um, how we handle serving alcohol versus uh, some of our uh, life type of business. Thank you, Steve. Make a motion to approve the liquor license for 14, sir. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. Oh. Wait. Thumbs up. I was in the house, I heard the first one. Yeah. Uh, so, Steve, uh, it's, it's very Steve, it's been approved. And uh, just from from my perspective, Steve, the uh, 14 Star is a great addition to the community. And to your point, with all the community events that you got, you folks have organized over the years, uh, you really, the business really adds a lot to the community. So thank you for that. Thank you all. And, uh, and we're looking forward to, uh, to getting back into doing more in the community as, as we're able to. Great. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. You. Have a good evening. Motion approved the uh, meeting of Flickr Control Board, August 10th, 20th. Second. Motion by Tim, second by Chad. All those, any corrections or amendments to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Board to abstain. To abstain? Yes. Yep. One abstention. Uh, motion passes to accept the minutes. Uh, Curry, going back to you for 4A. Sure, so thank you. Yep, and that application will get the doc to the Department of Liquor Control first thing in the morning. I like to scan it to them too, so they know it's on the way, and at the time, they'll send me the new places very quickly after that, and I'll get time. Um, you know, that being said, you know, my office, we really try to make this license approval process really easy for establishments in town. Reminders, letters, you know, how to do things, you know, hey, uh, I haven't heard from you, can I help you with anything? Um, and adding to that, I've met the new area supervisor, um, Sergeant Brandon King. So he's checked in with me about you know what establishments we have, you know where people are at with their licenses. I understand there were a few delays with the Department of Liquor Control, but they're pretty much caught up with us certainly by now anyway. Um, but so I do keep in contact with him. So I think that's a really great resource. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that um, and. You know, looking back at the minutes, I was like, wait, am I sure the last time we met was August 2020? So I just wanted to uh, say that city liquor tax has we ceased collecting it um, starting October 1st of 2020, just a reminder, you know, for anybody in the establishment system. And can you just state why that why we ceased it? Exactly. Yep. So we uh, the local options tax uh, was instilled at that time. So um, that replaced the, the city office. Separate, so. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Curry? Just to say that I've never seen that operation run smooth in the last 16 years. I don't know if it does under you. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Anyone else? Curry, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Of course, have a great evening. Have a good evening. Thank you as well. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Back into the right. Motion to adjourn. Moving Same. back to council meeting. Second by Chad, motion by Jim. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed. So we're moving on um, to item number five. Uh, we have with us Las Angus, who's representing the um, Storage Preservation Commission as chair. Mattis, how are you tonight? I'm good. Good, good. Thank you for joining us. Um, you, the, maybe uh, you or Chip can refresh my memory. The commission has been together for, have, are we, have we made a year yet? Yes, we made a year. We had our first meeting just before COVID and we became organized and we submitted our application to the state <laughs> and became a certified whatever. Certified local government. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we didn't meet at all and um, 
We met quickly last November because there was an application for grants, and we applied for $18,000 to help us um, update the Salmon's Historic District. And we received the money, and we found out in February. Um, we have a schedule we meet four times a year, and we've met twice already. And uh, the city has supplemented that amount of money, and we went out to bid for a proposal from the Historic Preservation Consultants. We got four good proposals. Um, Lisa Papazian goes to the top. Um, very good, very good credentials, very good experience, and she knows the city, has done a number of projects in the city. So um, Chip Sawyer and two uh, members interviewed her, and they all liked her, and so um, we recommended going to Lisa. And we hope to start probably this summer. Lisa's going to forward us a schedule. Um, we're going to have a start-off meeting. We'll have a couple of public hearing meetings. We may do a little walk about town to look at the district and talk about maybe where it should expand, maybe where it should contract. Um, and we're looking to be done and ready to submit to the National Park Service probably later next year. If everything goes okay. Last, for those who may not know, can you share what the current district or ballpark of the what is a historic district? Sure, I have a map. Um, it's behind the churches in the courthouse on the east side of Taylor Park, behind those monumental buildings. It goes as far, it doesn't go to the. It goes about as far as Stevens, but it doesn't include the uh, passport building. Right, it doesn't include the passport building. It goes about as. Chip said sevens, doesn't include BFA. Um, and then south, it goes to Federal, Federal Street, Street stops. Yeah. Does it include that railroad building? It doesn't include the railroad building or the Jiro building. Yeah. yeah so it's on this side of Federal Street, yeah. our side of Federal Street. And the Jiro building has gotten historic tax credits. I believe it's on the register. We know the headquarters is. And then heading north of those, I don't know where it stops. Just Wait. about to um, both sides of the Hudson Street okay. and then back up to uh, then back up to Maine. And it's, it, it's pretty, it's, I think it's pretty small. There's some buildings in there that are no longer there or are no longer contributing. There's some buildings that when it was made a district weren't old enough to be considered historic. Um, we may expand it in some areas, you know, there's been talk about including passport building, maybe including BFA, um, but until we sort of sit down and really get into the meat potatoes of it, we're not sure yet. But uh, it needs to be updated. It's probably, probably what, one of the oldest ones yeah, that yeah, hasn't yeah. been updated right. in the state? Yeah. yeah. So, long yeah. overdue. Was the former post office, the passport center, is that? Was that not old enough when it was, it was, or was it this location? I don't know why it wasn't included, because it was built in the, was the yeah. 50s? It wasn't old enough. It wasn't if you can time. believe it, if you can believe it, you know, when the district was done in the 80s, that federal building was probably built, and even BFA wasn't quite old enough yeah. to be 50 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, uh, when you say behind the courthouse, you're not including but I know it's privately owned now, but the old jail building that probably can happen. I don't believe that it should, should be part of it. It should be. I don't believe it is. I think it stops at the back of those monumental buildings that face uh, the park. Okay. So I wonder why the uh, railroad headquarters, CBR headquarters, is in that district. It could have. It wasn't around then. Yeah. But it could be they didn't want it. Um, who knows? Possible. Yeah, they're possible. possible. They didn't want it. You know, they had taken down the shed. Who knows? True. Okay. Um, Chip, you have anything to add to that? No. It's a great group. It is a great group. Very excited. Nice mix of people. Uh, very passionate about what we're doing. Um, I think they will do some nice things. There's talk about doing some updated walking tours and maybe helping people at historic homes and don't know what the appropriate colors are 
complicated colors, but this sort of is where you can offer some advice and uh, maybe even do some renders or something just to help them along because sometimes people have a hard time visualizing it. But um, it's a nice group. They're very excited. They're very, very, very passionate. So, and it will be fun. Anyone have any other questions for us? <coughs> Last, thanks for your time and uh, your efforts on, on the commission. Thank you. Thanks for coming in tonight. We'll move on to item number six. Tom, if you want to come on up. Authorization of bond anticipation note. Good evening. Um, just by way of background for this, we have a uh, ongoing portfolio of and short term notes we have had since I've been in the city. Um, typically, uh, there is a drawdown process associated with those notes for the short term financing. Um, and even long term financing, um, Canyon Street is a great example. All the Canyon Street invoices will be reviewed by the engineer, will be reviewed by us. There's a drawdown process with the state. So even though that financing is secured, there might be a month lag between when we pay the bills and when we actually get the cash. Um, so the idea of full project having a lot of credit we get to slow the cash up front uh, was really attractive. We've never really done that before. And the interest rate is incredible. Um, the interest would be serviced by the local option tax, as was planned. Um, so one year note, we could, in theory, roll it over in a year. Um, but we anticipate working with the uh, Vermont Economic Development Authority and issuing long-term debt. Uh, we've never worked with uh, VIA before, um, but uh, we're working on an application, should have it relatively soon. And their rates are really competitive. Um, so this, this bridges that gap and, and takes any pressure off having to go to VIA in the short term, in essence. Um, the other advantage is if we can hold off just a few months, um, we'll have these programmatic financials in the fiscal year, and we're going to have the uh, American Rescue Plan funds on our books. And that's certainly not going to hurt uh, when it comes to long-term financing. Um, so this is, um, I think, a really good deal for the city. Um, it's going to make managing the whole project really easy. And even though this is on the books dedicated towards one project, money is fungible. So the city's just going to get a check for five million bucks, and everything is real easy once we get that. Can you just state what the interest rate is? I know it's very clear. 0.95 percent. So under a percent. Yeah. So if we did this for the full year, we'd be borrowing 40. We'll be paying 47,500 in interest. And when you do the pro forma for the pool, what what were we projecting the interest rate to be? Uh, in the range of three for the long term. Um, I think we'll probably beat that given where the market is now for better things all relatively steady. Um, we're, we pay attention to it, um, so if we if we sense that there's going to be um, any sort of real uptick in our borrowing costs, we can move that application along on the long-term funding. Uh, anyone have questions for Tom? This is good news for sure. Tom, oh, appreciate it. With the motion to authorize the uh, bond anticipation. Okay. Motion by Tim, second by Jim. Uh, any further questions or comments on this? Cheap money. Cheap money. Cheap money. Start with cheap money. Cheap, cheap. Um, I will need the, the hard copy so if someone could start signing and test out the line and can send it in the morning from Dom. Uh, okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, no further comments. All those in favor of approving the bond authorization? Say aye. 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 <coughs> Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. So Thank you. Signature page coming around, Tom. Thank you. Just need the signature page this whole time. There's a whole bunch of spots in there. <laughs> I'll stick around until it makes its way. Item number seven, consider approval of plan for new signage related to speeding. Sit. Okay. 
He's going to hand out the um, additional item that was emailed out today. More information on the speed sensor sign. Hopefully we don't need three digits on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we should make sure we don't buy more signs. Check. We'll take a, we'll take a look at that. Your speed. So, uh, Chip's going to talk about a couple signage. Uh, a couple of these suggestions came out of the Public Safety Committee and Quality of Life. So, uh, that's where this was generated. So Chip, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, we've heard some, you know, uh, some citizen advocacy as of late on this issue and uh, a desire from the council to find some solutions. So we're looking at two different um, proposed types of signs. One is a sign that is solar powered with a radar feature that will uh, show you your speed as you're coming into the city. And we first want to try this sign out on Lake Street and Lower Newton as you come into the city from the town from speed zones that are at 40 and 35. It's the kind of sign that uh, you'll see going to Swamp Village. Um, Route 7, and uh, you know, I'll tell you what the speed is, and I think if we, uh, we can set it at a different threshold, but at a certain speed above 25, it will start flashing at you. It might turn from uh, yellow to red. Um, and I believe, I'm not mistaken, these signs do have a uh, proven record of slowing traffic down. So we're looking at buying two, they're $3,200 each. Uh, there are maps in the packet with general locations on Lake and on Lower Newton where we're proposing to put them. You know, they have to be in the city. They have to be in the, they should be in the 25 mile an hour zone. And we found a spot where there's a good line of sight for traffic coming in. Uh, that sign will see you, you'll see the sign, and you might get a little reminder that you need to slow down. And then the other kind of sign is for more of the neighborhoods. It's a, I'm calling it a neighborhood caution sign. It's uh, the one that is sort of reminding, oh, it's right in the front. Reminding motorists to watch for children, joggers, bicyclists, and pedestrians. We are proposing to put these in a couple, uh, a couple locations east of the tracks and a couple locations west of the tracks. And we're going to try and maximize using existing sign posts and uh, not put in too many additional posts for these signs. So you'll see the proposal in the packet is at uh, South Elm coming in from Lake, South Elm coming in from Lower Weldon, North Elm coming on from Lake, North Elm at the intersection with Pearl, Bank Street coming on there from the Church and Maiden, actually right up here from the Church and Maiden intersection. Then Bank Street at High Street, put it right under that stop sign there as you come down the hill. High Street at Congress, so as you're going, uh, sorry, south on High, we'll put, well, we're proposing to put it on the stop sign at Congress. And then um, High Street as you come onto High Street from Fairfield Street. Maybe a pilot, maybe, maybe this is all we need to do, or maybe we do more, but I think this is an opportunity to try things out. I think it's important for not only neighbors and residents feeling a little bit more comfortable and feeling like we're, we're making an attempt to inform motorists and pedestrians and bicyclists to slow down and be safe around each other. Um, and and I, I think we might have that effect as well. So that's the proposal. Looking forward to council input. So we just, um, we had Lieutenant Weatherby ask the Swamp PD how the how the speed limit for flashing one did, and uh, the chief of police there said it's really dramatically decreased the speed limit complaints on that stretch. Mm -hmm. So as it is expensive, um, it seems to be effective at least in Swanton. Uh, I know it catches me. I mean, even though I'm only going 31, when it starts flashing, mm -hmm. I do slow down. Mm -hmm. Of course, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm only coming off a few feet before. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, so. We talked about a lot of things. Uh, one of the other things that we discussed possible is uh, narrowing the street on Lake Street as you come in, because as you narrow the street, it makes you instinctively slow down. 
uh, that there's some complications because if there's a bike lane there. And, um, so we thought we'd give this a try. This was our suggestion. Chad, I really, really appreciate the committee's work on this. I, you know, we, uh, I'm on House Bell Bops. We've got multiple towns that want to have the ability to lower their speed limits to try to deal with some of these issues. I uh, don't think that will necessarily be the most effective way, but the, you know, trying to create a culture where people understand there's multiple users, there are neighborhoods that, you know, Congress and Bank and Lord Newton, that they're not highways and you just, I mean, I get more complaints about people driving fast or driving recklessly than anything else and appreciate the effort and especially looking into things and talking to other communities. That's really awesome. So thank you. Even more than noise, Michael? Even more than noise. Uh, more than more than noise this year. Uh, I don't know if that's a, an effect of the pandemic, but pre-pandemic, it was all about the, loud, the loudness of the vehicles. Now it's about people feeling like they're going to get run over. So it's <laughs> Chip, I, I yeah, yeah so just wait until the fireworks start going off. That's really good. <laughs> uh, I, I want to thank you for um, incorporating the signs onto existing posts and existing signs. Um, I think they'll really take note when they're with the, on the stop sign as well. But um, sometimes I think we're inundated with signs and they go. Um, um, the attention or the message is sometimes lost in all of this, but this, I think, when they're incorporated with another sign, will be uh, will be helpful. So, thank you for that. I should note that both of these signs were uh, sourced by uh, Marty Manningham. I was just given the pictures and told <laughs> make it look nice. So. <laughs> um, if I may, uh, the. Uh, Neighborhood signs, which you've had, that you look at the non solar ones. Um, I've had more than one constituent on Federal Street, uh, the neighborhood portion of Federal Street, uh, um, um, north of the uh, Hoyt, that sit there on their porch and, uh, and watch cars race across there all the time at what they say is a very high rate of speed, high rate of speed line. Might be who is to think about putting one of those signs there. On federal gym or on point? Um, or yeah. both on federal? Yeah. I mean, they speed up point too, but if we get it on federal, it's a good step. And, uh, yeah, right. People thinking about it, you know. But, yeah, I, don't, I know we're not going to inundate the communities with uh, I mean, I love on a point, but I think federal makes more sense right now than like people speed across there. Federal five. Think about better camera for one of the electronic ones. Uh, good video. What was your Yeah, I think yeah, that's what he, Is that what you're advocating? Yeah, well, no, I was thinking of the, the non solar, but uh, the electronic would be great. I mean, yeah. We already have the uh, crosswalk sign down there, but uh, you know, I can go to, to go to the city school. But uh, I was thinking, yeah, maybe the, the electronic is speed. Like, I think they might be moving a lot. The other thing that fast that people are doing. Yeah. The other thing to consider about the radar signs is that, um, you know, posts can go in the ground and posts can come out of the ground. And I'm not volunteering PW to do a lot of extra work, but we, we kind of we could just put a post in the ground and move those speed signs around too. It doesn't have to be the speed car every time. Well, you get plenty of signs on on retirement to yeah. be able to put it out there. Right. I think Chip's talking about moving the two ones that flash. The oh, two, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. you know, put it on new for a little while. If it starts to slow traffic down there, you can move it to federal. Right. Okay. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Well, you think they're speeding more on federal going to Newman to circle back the city or coming in on federal trying to get into the city? I think, the city faster. I think they're uh, I think they're coming into the city speeding but Yeah, coming off Newman. Yes. Coming towards yes. Lake. Yeah. Because they're going to, they know they're going to hit the stop sign, so I don't think they have as much of a tendency to speed to get there. Chip, does, uh, maybe it's premature, but does Federal Street get narrowed at all uh, when and if we get to the uh, street project? There are two crosswalks planned, two new crosswalks. Um, 
I think the street might get narrowed a little bit, but nothing as dramatic as the bump out on Main Street. But that's, you know, we're still in the design stage, so that could be looked at. Well, you're thinking of a sidewalk on the other side of the street, too, right? Yep, sidewalk on the other side of the street. But those, cur those uh, crosswalks could really be a place to maybe also consider some traffic coming by design. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. A little bump out, small bump out. Chip, mm -hmm. I had one question on the uh, lower Newton one. Um, is where this is projected to be? Is that the city town line? It's past the city town line. City town line is around um, back towards the top of the hill, right? Yeah. So it's within the city. It's after you see the. 25 mile an hour sign, but it's soon after you see the 25 mile an hour yeah. sign. And it's, it's a stretch where the, there's plenty of time for you to see the sign for the sign to see you. Like, doesn't surprise me when I come around the corner or something. So, um, and, and I'm not sure if this is reasonable. My only concern is, is there enough transition time before they take that turn onto uh, North Elm Folks haven't been down there, the sidewalk has been put in coming around the corner from all this. And that crosswalk is pretty close to pretty close to Newton Street or Road. Um, I'm just thinking of reaction time coming around that corner at uh, a higher speed. I think that's, that's one of the main reasons we put it there. I'm just wondering if we want to back it up as far as we can just to allow for that transition time. But I'll let you. You know, it sees you. It sees you. The swat and sees you from quite a ways away. So you're, you know, you're probably sixty or seventy yards from it, and it starts splashing. But uh, coming up, up or you're coming up that hill, and then you got a crest, and that's when you'll see it. But I don't. I was thinking if you're back, catch a report you at the top of the hill. If if it's in the city. But, yeah. So I think the city line. That's the yeah. thing is we got to get to have it. I think the city line's after the crest of that hill. We'll um we'll place the sign so that it has enough time to affect your speed and slow you down, and also that you slow down low before you get to the next element of section. So the in Finn Ave, actually, Finn Finn Ave. Right. So the the sign location is a, is over three hundred feet. The proposed sign location is over three hundred feet from where the um block out is. I don't know if I like that. Like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I we don't need to vote on this, do we? No, no. Can we replace that off? That's an update. I, I just, Stevie, tell me if I'm wrong, but you advocated for these. Do um, you know, have any comments on this? No. No. Uh, I guess the only question is, is there one going up bank? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, and right uh, that, soon after the turn from Church and Raven. There's one going up bank. Okay, You're, uh, between, by Lincoln? Between Lincoln and Church is, on the, is the current plan. Between Lincoln and Church. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's one at Bank and High. Yep. Okay. So that, that whole block of bank would get the the uh, notice on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they, when they come around that corner from Main Street and they hit bank, they're off. There's no, you know, there's not a stop sign until the corner of Smith and Fairfield. Yeah. High. high. Yeah. There's not a stop sign until high. High and bank. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, high and yeah. bank. So yeah. That's a long but side what? Side I, side. But see, that was a slip because they just go right through that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just assume they stop. You know. Yeah. Oh. I wouldn't be surprising that we would need one on that lower part of Bank Street because usually there's so many cars parked on that side. You don't get one car through there anyway. That's. You know, so I mean, how can you? Yeah. There's not so many nowadays. Then. What car park there? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, pretty. You mean like in the last four days it's changed? No, no. Like the last couple times I've been down through there. I mean, you know, we've been in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've been in now. Yeah, we've been in a long stretch. I mean, it used to be, you know, you get way up before you could come down. 
I would agree if it's more linking up. Okay. Linking up, yeah. Linking up because there's no cars parked there, you know, and that's the that's speedway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but I think the, I think from Lincoln down to Maid Lane or even possibly even Main Street, there's so much on the north side of parking that I'm always bothered that when I turn that phone. I was too, I, uh, I did that for many years working for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because maybe you're going to look at it, uh, but someone else had brought to my attention the potentially going a four way stop that we could have in Bay. Um, Prior to do that, a lot of people are stopping anyway, they expect to be ready, you know, there's no sign. And, uh, it, was, it was mentioned by, to me by one of uh, Mike's constituents to take a look at that. It's, I think it adds consistency to what we've done in pretty much the rest of the city. I think that's a smart decision, but that's not my word, so I don't want to step on the stores, but I think that would be a great idea. Yeah, that corner is where that little boy was hit by a car three years ago. He would, he was going on Lincoln and he didn't stop. And Bank Street, so yeah. you know, there's some history there already. A lot of kids in that area. But I just leave that for your discussion. Yeah, it's a, it's a conversation with the neighbors because you always get, you know, the engine roaring right. as they take off or the fire screen. I mean, so no, no. I, don't, I don't know if it's, uh, we talked about there was another spot too, we talked about putting the stop sign, uh, but we were afraid in the winter folks wouldn't be able to get motoring back up. So, just a conversation to have with your word night. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk to people. Yeah, maybe we'll talk to a few people and see what they think. Okay. We'll have that discussion for the Congress when we end up putting a stop sign there. Yeah. Used to be, uh, yeah. you could go from Brainerd all the way to Vanetta High Street. With nothing? Nothing. Not nothing. All of that, all my life. I remember I, I spent that area once um, as a teenager. Once? Yeah, just once. I don't know, I got a lot of warnings, a lot of police warnings. Because I just didn't <laughs> forget about it. You know, I didn't even think about it. Just people. Yeah. When it first, you know, that's 50 years ago. 10 or 12 years ago. Right? Then about 12 years ago. Why? Right so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so Chip, uh, is that Ellen? Yeah, um, I just can't tell you how happy I am. I sat in on the um, public safety committee and it was a really good discussion and I was really happy with it. It was cool and taking it really seriously. It was uh, it was good to hear some of the ideas thrown about and I can't back the speed trailer idea enough. Um, I, I have experience in the one in Swan as well and again for me it's effective, it's visible and that's great. But uh, even just doing some preliminary reading online, the statistical a reduction in speed is promising. So, uh, it being a pilot project in St. Albans City, of course, um, I think it's encouraging to see some statistics from elsewhere. Uh, in that reading and in that searching, I just um, would ask, is there any way with this pilot project uh, that the speed trailers have any sort of data that can be collected. I don't know if that's a common thing. It looked common from what I was looking at, but I was curious if the speed trailers that were going to be deployed uh, had a way to collect any information so that if you don't do see obviously big reductions, you could move it elsewhere and, and test the same things. I, um, I posted asking a question about this. I live on the Lincoln Federal intersection. It's, a, it's hell down there. We all know that. Um, I asked folks about speeding and dangerous driving in their area. And again, being a pilot project, can't put speed traps or speed trailers everywhere. But um, of the responses that I got, um, Fairfield was identified as a, as a street that was um, that people identified things like uh, speeding, fast driving, bumping up on curves, distracted driving, that kind of thing. Uh, and it was concerning to folks, again, uh, children, families, that kind of stuff. Uh, Lincoln Avenue. People were writing in about Lincoln Avenue uh, and Federal Street, and a few others like Lake and Bernal Terrace and Elm Street and stuff. But um, yeah, so if data collection is part of the speed trailer, that would be tops, and it would really inform later decisions about this. That'd be great. Um, and then folks, when asked about possible solutions, 
people were like, bring on the speed trailers or something people specifically mentioned. Radar signs, radar signs, radar signs, in addition to things like uh, speed risers or pumps and then police patrols. But uh, given that the speed trailer is an inanimate object that sits there, any gains that can be made I think would be really inexpensive and respectful of folks' time. So I can't thank you all enough for, for tackling this. I know it's probably an issue that's never gone away or it comes back every year. And that kind of thing. So I appreciate it. I really do. I think the PD does have uh, the capability to do number of cars, the time, and the speed. That's in the full trailer. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's a box they put on the pole. Right. Because I've seen, I've seen that. I've seen Gary came in before yeah, once right. and had those charts um, when we got rid of um, when we closed Fulton Street. Um, I said that the traffic had increased dramatically on. Southbound. Of course, they were doing Main Street as well at the same time, but uh, he had data that was a couple years old and then he brought in new data. Um, so they, they put the box up to collect the data. So I think we may have that capability too already. Awesome. It's awesome. uh, just a great box that changed the whole. Huh? It's very conspicuous. Okay. Which would be good because you could do it for a couple weeks before and then you could, you could move one of them and just see if it makes an impact. So, uh, Zach, I just looked through here and Chip, maybe you can, uh, I don't see where there's additional settings, maybe uh, outside of speed. It might know. be possible to have it collect data. We'll find out. We'll check on that, Zach. Hey, thanks so much. So there, I have a procedural question. Yep. This has been put on here for discussion and vote. Now, if we, um, what are we voting on? Are we voting on just authorizing the purchase of these signs? Are we actually going to where they're going to be located? I think that was an error. I don't think we need to do that at all. That's why I just asked if we have to vote on this. It's just a informational. Okay, so it's not for discussion. Yeah, it's a budgetary. I like it. I don't know. Hurry up. Use it. Um, it was given a kind of council work product to get to this point, so we wanted to bring it out to the council to report out, give it a chance to fine tune it. We got the sense of that from the discussion. Um, it was warned as DVD in case you want to direct us, um, but we have a sense to go forward based on the discussion, unless there's further comments we'll do that. I think the consensus, tell me if I'm wrong, consensus is we move forward. Staff will take it and run with it. So, yep, thanks for your homework. Thank you very much. Thanks for your work on that. <laughs> um, no, item number eight, which is consider approval of resolution authorizing the sale of Seven Mason. So Seven Mason was a piece of property that burned many years ago. Uh, Thank you, baby. Thank you. Have a good night. It became a uh, vacant lot. The city acquired it um, in order to influence uh, the type of development that occurred there. Uh, there's a PNS in your packet. Uh, to sell the property for uh, 50000 and put a uh, single family dwelling on it. Uh, so, uh, our work is done. We're ready to transfer the property. Uh, I will be approved uh, the resolution authorizing sale of 7 East Street. I'll second. We have a motion by Chad, seconded by Marie. Any comments or questions? Good deal. City lot, water sewer, 50,000. Yeah, it is. It's a small lot, but it's, it's, I think it's in a good location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there, I think there's a stipulation here as well as to the timing of this, the construction of the house. Uh, what are you looking at? I, I, in discussion with Marty, I thought that it had to be built within a year. Yeah. By, by this individual, yeah. it can't be yeah. resold to Tim's point. Well, it's it's can't be, for us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, can't, it can't be resold for profit. It's got to be, he will he will use it to construct a spec house. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Well, it's got to be sold once he constructs the house. Mm. Right? right, but uh, a similar situation was to get the block out resold for profit. Yeah. So just trying to control that. Um, we have a motion and a second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. Resolution approved. Just a quick question. There's still vacant lot on Lake Street. Um, down across from the couple houses that got repaired this past to be on the north side. I was looking at that. Just past Cedar. Yeah, there is. There's still vacant lot yeah. there too, right? Yeah. Do we know how many other vacant lots that are in the city with that are building lots that don't have houses on them? No, no. no. There's one on I shown which I think has a building permit, I think. There's one on Nason too, right? Going up right by Safe Down Place across the street. That's this is one. Oh, well, yeah, right next to the red house. Yeah. I thought this was farther down. No, this is seven. Is there another one down on Nathan Street? Mm, not that I'm aware of. There's a lot that we were looking at for stormwater. Yeah, so that's, that's that was twenty eight. That was twenty eight. Chip, uh, is there a building permit for the one on Nathan? Um, uh, I don't think there is. I think it's just for sale. The one on Lincoln got rebuilt, right? The one that burned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 And what about the one on your street, Tim? The one further up? Did that get the one that yeah. cross home? Yeah. 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 That was nice. Okay. Since we're talking homes, I just uh, like to acknowledge I haven't sent them an email mm -hmm. yet, but um, Mike Gosselin did a repair, uh, purchase and upgrade on uh, the bottom of Brainerd Street. Yeah, the gray one, which I think has turned out very well. Uh, thank you for that investment in yep. the city. Looks nice down there. Looks great. Looks great. Big improvement. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to item number nine, uh, review city uh, council goals and objectives for 2021. Well, this uh, typically, um, uh, this time of year and coming months, we'll get together and uh, set some objectives for the year ahead. Uh, this uh, update on the sheet just reports out all the work that's uh, occurred in the last um, nine, 12 months since we, since we looked at this last. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of boxes that are checked on this, honestly. Uh, you know, most of the things that are ongoing are more on the strategic level of things that were, uh, will always be ongoing. I think the process works. Um, we get together once or twice a year. The council sets uh, some priorities, and the staff goes to work and gets them done. So um, I can take a deep dive on any of these if you'd like. But we'll just have to read them through. Uh, are there questions that anybody have or areas you would like to give us to get a higher priority? Any thoughts on when you'd want to have that next meeting on this? Going to reach out to the mayor and try to coordinate schedules. You know, I think it has to be an in person discussion. And mm -hmm. now that we're able to meet in person again, maybe we can look at the universal guidance and people's vaccination schedules and figure out a time when we can get together. We had traditionally done it in May, and then last year it got really pushed back. So. Somewhat it depends on the, on the election cycle of the council, too, yeah. right? So usually it's either in the spring or it's in the fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've done it. It's kind of like the, the incoming, you know, for the council member. They've been here a meeting or two. And yeah. yeah. And I think it also depends on what's the, like how we're doing on the list, right? And what's on our plate. So it feels like it'd be a good time to, to check in again. Prefer to do it before summer starts or after summer starts. Okay. I thought the last I thought the last one was in the fall. Yeah, I think it was. They were going to do it in the fall. Okay, so we'll coordinate and get back. Uh, I, I'd like, uh, I think it's been a year and a half, so I'd, I'd like to do it before summer starts if possible. So council, it may, it may come on you pretty quick. Maybe by the end of the month if we can pick a night. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, moving on to mayor's reports. Um, we talked about Green Up Day, went very well. Uh, probably had, um, probably had uh, almost seventy-five to hundred folks out. Um, we had, uh, we had private entities, the Salmons Co-op put a team together, 
CCB put a team together, uh, uh, the police station had a team, uh, National Guard, and, um, and the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Yep. So a lot of folks out there, uh, Marty told me uh, two, two of the city's dump trucks uh, were full. Um, I'm not sure what the weight was, but uh, um, it's just nice to see. Uh, and what's hap what, I, what I see happening is that uh, there seems to be a different focus each year. So it's sort of a revolving situation where uh, like all the <laughs> all the street may not have been touched in the past, but had a lot of attention this year, as um, as had Lemon Drive in the past, but not maybe not so much this year. So um, thank you all for participating. Appreciate that. Um, and, uh, we'll, we and, and I would say we we also received some very good coverage. If you can see it on Channel Three uh, for the city and the and the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. So. Um, that went well. A um, couple things moving forward. Um, this this uh, uh, tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow, the uh, National Guard, it's, if it's not tomorrow, it's Wednesday, the National Guard is doing their send off and utilizing Taylor Park to do their send off for the troops that are going overseas for 10 to 12 months. Um, so I think that'll be a great event. We also did, um, Dom and I and Emerson Lynn got together and um, did a uh, celebration of Warren and Barbara Ham's time and uh, initiatives that they are responsible for in St. Albans. Um, we had about 50 people attend, which was perfect for COVID scenario. We did it in the auditorium. It was spread out very well. Um, had some speeches. Um, and some presentations and I think all in all, everyone thought it went off very well. I know the hams were very appreciative of that. Um, um, not nearly as much as we are appreciative of what they did for the community over the year. So uh, that proved to be um, a good event as well. So I think Marty's moving ahead with some booking of some concerts in the park. Uh, I'm not sure how many. I've spoken to Kathy Manahan about potentially moving forward with the car show in some form or fashion. So um, as we talked about earlier, we're slowly getting back to normal in some ways. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll see more community events moving forward. So I think um, I would also say that um, F, uh, in my real job, FCIDC donated a bench in, in not in memory, but uh, dedicated to Bud Brewley up at the Greg Brown Lodge. And um, so we had about 20 folks up there this weekend. Lacrosse is going on. Uh, rec staff has done a great job utilizing uh, American recovery money to to purchase tables and benches. And I don't think you can. I don't think you can beat the uh, environment up there when there's games going on and people using the trails and everything else. So um, it'll be that much more impressive when the pool's in place. So um, if you haven't been up, sure you get up and uh, experience the area. It's beautiful. So why don't we move on to item number 11, which is council reports. And we'll start with... Uh, Are we doing anything with Ken? Did I miss that something? Uh, oh, yeah. All of them yeah. stated or is 10B? We just did 10B. So we so right. yeah. 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 right. should have used 10 You're right. 10 10C. I inadvertently crossed it off with 10B. So um, we also had some um, interviews that had happened relative to the um, DAB. I'm not sure if I can refresh my memory who did. I think Bob and I both did. I think you were with one, right? Yeah, that was Rick. Yeah. He and in, and sorry. Then Bob, myself. I did uh, Mr. Johnson with you. Yeah. You, you did Rick with us too, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're both uh, very impressive and they both responded very well to uh, our questions. They both seemed interested in the service that we were doing in the international capacity. They both bring slightly different. Uh, and when you say both, Bob, you're referring to Mr. Johnson and Mr. Lavelle. He runs the, uh, the new restaurant on Center Street. The oh, Iron Day North, North. North. 
Marsh. Marsh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other two were um, Chip. Go ahead. John Mori and Elizabeth Reed both wish to return. Were reappointments. Reappointments, yeah. Well, Elizabeth Reed wants to get an alternate, correct? Elizabeth Reed would be happy to, be, to go to an alternate. John is currently an alternate, and he like a full board seat. He has more time to devote to it now. So the what openings do we have now? Two full seats and two alternates. Okay. And four candidates. So those who did the so you said Elizabeth and John are happy with alternate or no John would like to be uh John would like to move from alternate to full and um you know er Eric Johnson did volunteer to me in an email that he'd be, he'd be willing to consider alternate too since he'd be new. I never asked Rick LaValle about it, which okay. I have, but we do know that Elizabeth and Eric seemingly would not be upset if they were given alternate seats to start. Or I, Eric Elizabeth would like to transition to alternate. I don't think Eric would be upset if he, was, if he started out at alternate. Is Eric still serving on the downtown board? Yeah. So if I heard you correctly, we could ultimately, uh, there's three that are interested in being alternates. Only two. Two. Eric and And John Moore and Rick John Moore would like to be okay. the full time. Yeah. So those who did the interviews, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, select uh, for DAB members, uh, Eric Johnson, Rick LaValle, John Moore, Elizabeth Reed, uh, in the following capacity, uh, Eric Johnson as an alternate, Elizabeth Reed as an alternate, uh, Rick LaValle as a full-time member, and John Moore as a full-time member. I'll second that. A motion from Tim, seconded by Bob. Any other questions or comments? Term, in what terms would the full-time or so? We typically do three years. Three years, okay. So you're we, not finishing an open seat that says April 30, 2022. They would have to go to that term. You could just do a new three years. You could just reset that one okay. to uh, 2024. Okay. Okay. It's motion and seconded. Any, any other comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none. So Chip, you have that. You make the proper notification. Thank you. And then we'll move to C, which is City Council subcommittees. Uh, we had uh, tonight, Zach. Um, we have um, the public safety and quality of life. Um, Chad had reached out to Bob to fill um, the void on that, the vacancy on that committee. And Bob, you oh, agree to that. Agree. Uh, despite the twisting of the arm, you were, we're in a public a public environment now. You can you can if you don't want to do it. <laughs> we know how Chad can be. So are you fine with it? I'm fine with it. Okay, so we'll appoint uh, the mayor. Will appoint Bob to fill the seat on the public safety finance committee. We'll remain with Tim, Jim, and Mike if that works. Um, and just to review the public safety committees, Chad, Bob, Marie, and Marie. So thank you all for the additional committee work. Now we'll move to council reports. Um, we'll start over here on my left, Jim. So they don't have uh, anything to report. Everything's been doing great. And glad we're back together in person. Uh, um, like I said, we're pretty much at home. And, uh, um, I issued the, I told you about the concerns of some of the constituents I was speaking and everything and everything and, uh, and we have the signs for good, so, uh, uh, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Did you want to share with us, um, who styled your hair? <laughs> Real city. Real city, all right. It looks good. Uh, thank you. Mike? Um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, I, I had a comment from a neighbor that they're, um, and I haven't driven by to check and see if it's still there, but for the past couple of weeks, there's been a, a toilet 
outside of somebody's uh, place uh, near the corner of Lincoln and Bank. Um, not sure what what we do about those free items that stay too long past the ordinance, but if that's a PHSO violation or traffic calming. It's traffic calming. Awesome. I'll make sure to move it right to the center line. That'll help. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, I wanted to follow up on the conversation that we had around um, the vote and the municipal authorization or lack thereof of retail cannabis that, from our presentation last month. So my committee took S25 um, and voted to uh, House GovOx, and the, it hasn't come to the full house yet, but voted to remove the, what the Senate had, which was an automatic approval uh, in 2023. So that automatic approval is gonna be gone in the House version, and I'll keep you all posted on whether it stays in or not. But I think we've had plenty of communities opt in. If the petition is successful and the voters of St. Albany City say they want us to work on having retail here, fine. And if not, that's the decision. But we really felt strongly that the legislature should not force municipalities to say yes, just to have a diversity of geography and who gets retail licenses because there are already 20 communities that have approved it. So um, we're, we may have a battle ahead on that between the House and the Senate, but uh, you know, I think the governor's with the House on this. And uh, I feel really strongly that we shouldn't have that automatic yes trip in 23 the way the Senate had it in there. But I guess I thought that was a good idea. No, that was just in the Senate version of the bill. That, that's what I was saying at the meeting. It might have gotten lost. That's why I wanted to put a final point on it that, that my committee had the bill but just hadn't looked at it yet last time we talked. So I now I'm fully up on it because we took a lot of testimony and we voted it out and got rid of that provision. So there's no automatic trip anymore. If it gets put to the voters here, then and they so say no. If it never goes to vote, nothing happens. Yeah, if it never goes to the, the uh, if 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 the House version prevails, which I think is what will happen, and it never goes to a vote, then there's no retail cannabis license. If it goes to a vote and there's no, there isn't some automatic future trick that says, well, okay, after there's a number of communities that have sort of gotten the early first licensees, then there's this other round. So it'll really be, if it goes to a vote, it's our decision. Um, wanted to say thanks to Curry for her help and advice on the universal vote by mail bill. I'll be reporting that and that'll have a big impact on us because there's a debate about whether local elections should be universal vote by mail. And again, my position is that we shouldn't force the city of St. Albans to mail ballots to everybody before they're ready or before we make the timeline adjustments. So it'll just be for the general election for now, and we can decide under S15 if we want to mail the ballots to everybody. And you recall that back in January, Curry was really worried about the timeline to do that for town meeting day. Um, but if she found the right vendor, she might come to us with a recommendation and a cost, and then we could decide ourselves. Um, but there's there's uh, other folks who want to say every single election should be universal mailing, and I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. Um, so that's that. And um, I will talk with folks in the neighborhood about how they feel about stop signs at Lincoln and Bank per the recommendation earlier. Okay. Bob? Well, I think we're in a pretty quiet uh, month in Board of Five, as far as I can tell. I did go up to Green Up Day at the Barlow Street School, and I found the, the Girl Scout troop from St. Albans Town was well underway collecting everything, and it did a great job. I talked to Sarah Blow, she's the head of Girl Scout Troop 30456, and I said I'd put in a good word for her at the city council meeting. And she, she said, uh, I said, you're from the town, why are you what are you doing up here? It's, it's all one big community, as far as I'm concerned. That, that was a, a nice attitude. And I've also been working on, as, as, as all of you folks have the invoices this month, Marie and I are doing the invoices. I'm sure she's very familiar with it, but I've got a lot of help from Tom and uh, Ashley Jean has been quite helpful and well underway now. But there were a few glitches at first, so I think they've done a good job with me. And uh, finally, I went with uh, Tim, of course, did a great job as a host of the Admiral Handbook a couple of weeks ago. I 
And that was a nice event because the color guards all around the ring was there. I don't know if anybody else was there. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't write that. <laughs> but anyway, that's. I was so, overdressed. <laughs> yeah, put that on. But anyway, that's what's going on and from my point of view. Thank you, Bob. Tim? Uh, nothing in the Ward 1. Uh, I do have a couple of comments on uh, the city generally. Um, I'm just wondering if there's something that we can do about buildings that are vacant, uh, that have a lot of windows in them, that we can require that they cover the windows so that we don't see the garbage on the inside of the buildings. Um, and also, uh, I noticed there's a couple of buildings on Main Street um, that are in rough shape uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the old district. Uh, Jim one of the year old office building. Um, where you reserve hard harbor used to be. And I think that's now my realty uh, is in that building. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm always concerned about the wall. So, uh, but mainly uh, I, I, I walk a lot now because I have that knee operation and trying to get as much exercise in as I can on. Um, but I, I noticed that uh, there's no mandate anywhere to have people cleaning the store windows or uh, and, and when there's properties vacant, they're not covering windows. Um, I think uh, one fed has done a good job. Uh, you know, there's nothing going on there. They got a lot of construction materials inside there. They got the windows covered, uh, so it doesn't you know it doesn't really look vacant. But I mean, it just uh, it makes it look a lot better. And uh, I'm sure everyone knows the buildings I'm talking about. Yeah. Is there a self ministry? Is there anything that's going to happen with that old uh, gas station that uh, that's still been no, there? Slowly but surely, they're fixing that. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 building for months. Yeah, usually every every week or two, they've done something more to it uh, to make it look a little bit more. I mean, the building's new now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Rick? Uh, or three spent actually. Fairly quiet. Um, I just had one question though. Um, the uh, sighting on the hotel still was missing. Do they have plans for that sometime soon? I met with the contractor today on that. The challenge has been um, it's, it's hard work to get done. It's high up, uh, it's hard work to price, and there's a lot of much lower hanging fruit in, in the contractor. We share the concern. We're all over it. And we're in close contact with the property. Was that wind damage? Or is that? No, it was an installation damage. It was a faulty product. Not, not a insta product, faulty product, not an inst install product. So, um, and then it, you know, it happened uh, and, uh, roughly around the time that everything went dark with COVID and they were hit the most. So. Yeah, I think it would be addressed pretty quickly. Good, thank you. And I agree with Tim about the, the place with garbage in it. It's, it is really unsightly. I was noticing it one day coming up Lake Street, and it was very bad. That's funny you mentioned that. I have the exact same assessment of doing some walking as well. So, yes. Um, uh, if other councilors are similarly inclined, we can bring forward and, uh, the public health and safety ordinance is a great place to stitch in a requirement like that. We can give you something to think about. Can we bring that? Because I'm thinking that that may have an impact on some businesses on the street. Is there a way that we could have the downtown board kind of review it too? Okay. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not vacant for a long time on the street, but there are some. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm just thinking like someone was trying to give away a train set, and then they said, you know, this would look great. Uh, so I think Dave Southwick said that would look great. Put a train in it and have it in an empty storefront during the holidays. You know, so if we did that, then we have to cover the windows and do something like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we can thread that needle. Okay. And I, I think there's property owners who take some satisfaction in having all the construction equipment right in front of the window and the windows dirty. So, okay. Anything else? No, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, just a couple of little things. Uh, 
I think they, the crew have been up doing street sweeping. That's been fantastic. So streets look, mm -hmm. streets look great. I mean, I mean, there's no leaves, there's no debris. Um, so I do appreciate that. Um, one thing I think we underutilize that other communities um, use quite a bit is Vermont Alert. So I got a Vermont Alert um, the other day telling me that fire engines are going to be flushed in Burlington and you're probably going to have dirty water. So, you know, it's all over Facebook. Once we start flushing hydrants that, hey, I got groundwater, does anyone else have groundwater? And then there's a whole big long discussion about how crappy the city water is. Mm -hmm. um, if we can avoid that, uh, it'd be great. But it's just, it pains my ball and just says, you know, and I get them quite often for accidents happening on the interstate. Um, if there's a tornado, I get them for tornado. So you can go onto the monitor and set it. Um, Vermont Alert can also, if it's an Amber Alert or something, they can just any um, cell any cell phone that's pinging off a certain tower, they can send an alert to that. And either even if you haven't signed up for it to give the alerts, um, it'll it'll ping your cell phone. So I just say that because if we have you know if we have a boil, we need to boil water at some point. Maybe someone's trying to mix water with baby formula or something. At least we could ping a tower and say, hey, the boil water alert right now. So, you know, before you mix your water with baby formula, you want to boil it. So, um, I just think we underutilize it. Uh, we were cold red or whatever, whatever. We kind of went down that path, and much of the rest of the state went to the water. So, I think it's free. You just need to go through a training to have someone do the alerts. So, yeah, I think BDM is the one for that. Uh, and the only, the only other thing I want to say is um, I was driving down Lake Street s slow because someone was turning into uh, Beverage Mart and I noticed like I look down, I look north and you look south and the walls are starting to cave in onto the, into the brook. So at some point I know the, the property property owner in the blue house on the um, very upper part of the lower well then that wall has collapsed in and we put cement jersey barriers along Keep, keep the, the yard from washing out. Um, as we get some of this infrastructure money and we talk about doing uh, water quality improvements, this might just be something that we, we're gonna have to address. I don't know how to address it. I don't know if replacing the walls is the thing to do or um, how to do it, but it just might be something to start thinking about. Yeah, for Yeah. You mean on the, in between Handy property and Ross Arsenal property? Yeah, yep. that started, that's you know, yeah. What about the other side? Yeah, well, the other side is really bad. We're also talking up by uh, lower well, right? Yep, the very top part of the lower well. And that wall, it, it makes it comes out from underneath Main Street right. and then it makes a bend. The left, that whole wall is collapsed. So that's actually the river bed now, is that wall. So we put Jersey barriers on top of the side to keep that, keep the river from washing up that lot. So it's just something to think about. I don't, I don't know how to fix it. Anytime you touch that river, that whatever you want to yeah. build, it's that's a mess with the all kinds of agencies from the state. So, just so came in and gave us a talk on that uh, from Vermont's uh, stream bed stabilization program. Who, who was that? If Tim wasn't here, it was uh, with uh, I thought Liz. Jeff, Jeff Young came in at one time and talked to us about making it, where it goes through Holman Park and between Holman Park and Immigration, it's a straight shot. He wanted to make it. More battling through the park and through the trees and stuff. Yeah. That, that, I think that was the last conversation we had about it. So, just, I mean, that people's awareness. Yeah, that helps. Nope, that's it. So, thank you. Um, before you uh, leave here I, and uh, Chad brought up about the big long thing on Facebook about brown water, it just dawned on me that uh, we're getting a lot of bad publicity, and I want to bring it up. Uh, in a man of public meeting. Some people, I guess, are just discovering the fact that we have a long sale ordinance and that we require a permit to have a long sale. Had that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We've had it for 10 years. 20, over 20 yeah. years. Since 1997. It was, uh, it was there when I was on the council before. And uh, Thank you, we, we created it you know, when I was on the council before. And uh, basically, it's to prevent summer long sales without without permits, without uh, paying anything. Um, in fact, when we created it, it was, uh, it had to be two weeks in between each of the uh, um, time 
each of the permits, now it's seven days, so it's even more liberal than it was when we created it. And uh, first two are free, you don't cost anything, you have to come to City Hall and get a permit, that's apparently a problem with some people. And the and the second two I think are ten bucks or fifteen bucks. Uh, uh, and each of those permits is good for 10 days. And we kept the 10 days, so if you play your card right, you can get two weekends out of it. So I don't see an issue with it, but a lot of people don't understand it. And we're getting a lot, like I say, a lot of bad publicity because of it. I just wanted to come out directly and explain that there's some good, there's a reason for this. But you need to do more selling than that. You probably got to consider renting a storefront downtown. Exactly. So Jim, just to clarify, even though you don't pay for the first two, you still have to come in and get a permit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there used to be a lot of signs and they were did not, know, permits. did not know that. The only way is people know that you're not the new without a permit. Yeah. Most of the complaints were on Ruby Street, I believe. Well, I'm, yeah. I, I was just thinking I'm going to talk to my kids. Well, I'll, I'll trace on, on that. Facebook, you're complaining that there's a big I think it was a, I think it was a Smith. I'll straighten my kids out, Jim. <laughs> if you can control your dogs, do that. Much good, man. I thought you were done. <laughs> this portion of the meeting so, is called reporting on the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I thought when you started to speak that you were going to offer your uh, uh, real city salon. Uh, contact to Chad. Yes, that's it. Uh, if you could share that with Chad before <laughs> the next meeting. I tried to. We just have to That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I, I did. Uh, I made one other note here. I did want to uh, publicly thank um, Bridget and Valdemar uh, Garibay uh, for those who may not have seen it at the entrance up on Congress to get to all this hill. You have to go across their property. It's private property. And they have been more than willing to allow that. And they have done, along with the city south, some substantial improvements of that entranceway. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, um, it's, it's just a, it's a major improvement to access all the hill. I think uh, that will help a lot of people find it moving forward. So thank you to, to both of them and their willingness to, uh, to allow that. So um, any, anyone else have any other business? Okay, we'll move on to approval of meeting minutes for 41221. Motion to approve minutes 412. Second. Motion by Tim, second by Jim. Any corrections, changes, or amendments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, minutes approved. Motion to approve warrants 43021. Second. Motion to approve warrants. Uh, motion by Tim, second by Jim for 430. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes to approve the war. Good seeing everyone. Yeah. Appreciate it. Entertain the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion by Jim. Second by Chad. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a pause.